On this episode of China Uncensored, why does China suddenly want to be friends with Japan? Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Last week marked the 45th anniversary of diplomatic ties between China and Japan. And suddenly, it seems like they're best buddies. And that's weird. Until 1972, their diplomatic ties consisted of a brutal military invasion, which China still refers to not as World War II, but as the War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression. And the war was followed by nearly 30 years of anti-Japanese propaganda. But eventually, diplomatic ties were restored. And now, relations between China and Japan have never been better. In a rare appearance, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe actually showed up to an event hosted by the Chinese Embassy in Tokyo. That was the first time in 15 years that a Japanese Prime Minister showed up to this kind of shindig. Abe and Chinese Premier Li Keqiang also exchanged congratulatory messages. You know, congratulating each other on not tearing each other's throats out. Li's message talked about improving ties, quote, in the spirit of taking history as a mirror and looking into the future. Yeah, if Li Keqiang ever asks if you'd like to go to his poetry reading, tell him you have somewhere else to be. But as um, beautiful as that poetry may sound, the Chinese Communist Party has actually been undermining Japan for years, even during the period of diplomatic relations. For example, the CCP has stolen tons of Japanese technology. I'm looking at you, high-speed train. Sadly, China did not steal Japan's safety standards for high-speed trains. And then in 2012, the CCP allowed widespread anti-Japanese riots across China. It was sparked by a dispute over some small, uninhabited islands. And then some people decided the most logical course of action would be to march down the street carrying pictures of Mao Zedong? Okay, but then they also destroyed every Japanese product in sight. Like this Chinese police car that happened to be made in Japan. An overreaction? Chinese police didn't think so. I'm thinking maybe the CCP told them to look the other way. But the CCP was still worried about all those Chinese citizens who didn't join the protests. Maybe they didn't hate Japan enough. That's why the CCP embarked on a slew of borderline absurd Japanese-themed TV shows. Not absurd like that game show, Food Floor Dinosaur. That was awesome. These ones were not. They were mostly about killing people. In 2013, Quartz reported that 30% of Chinese primetime TV was dedicated to shows about killing Japanese soldiers. As you might imagine, at that time, for the 40th anniversary of Sino-Japanese relations, China didn't even bother sending a congratulatory message. In fact, as recently as two months ago, China sent its military into Japanese air defense identification zones and told them to get used to it. But now, the CCP is suddenly being friendly, hosting that anniversary party and all. So how did the CCP go from Japanese and dogs are forbidden to hosting a black tie party for the prime minister with an awesome ice phoenix? Well, it's the fallout from this. That's the path a North Korean missile took right over Japan just a few weeks ago. Though it wasn't targeting Japan, it did freak everyone out and it reopened Japan's internal debate about developing its own military. After the Japanese surrender in World War II, the U.S. forced Japan to agree to a constitution that prohibited the country from having any military except a self-defense force. Japan is also not allowed to declare war or have nuclear weapons. And before you ask, Godzilla is allowed. He's part of the self-defense force. Though, having him around is a bit of a double-edged sword. Anyway, the CCP has always been happy about Japan's military restrictions. When your biggest economic rival can never go to war against you, it makes you feel a bit more confident telling them to get used to your own military activity. Right up until they start pushing for a military. Then it's time to make peace. But Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has always wanted a military, and North Korea is giving him the perfect excuse. Kyoiwa. The gravity of this threat is unprecedented. It is indisputably a matter of urgency. 
It's also giving him a much needed boost in the polls at home. Abe is taking advantage of bolstered approval ratings, partly on the back of his handling with the situation with North Korea. In a bid to achieve his long held goal of revising Japan's post war pacifist constitution. This is something he's been pushing for for a long time. In 2014, Japan made the first expansion of its defense force in 40 years. Not long after, he made a reinterpretation of the Japanese constitution. Instead of limiting military force to Japan's self defense, Japan could now also use its military to defend an ally. And just a few months ago, Abe put a deadline on his plans to change the constitution. This was right after saying North Korea could launch a sarin gas attack. Japan has also recently been doing live fire drills with the U.S. military. The U.S. has a mutual defense treaty with Japan. That means the U.S. is bound to protect Japan, including the Senkaku Islands. Those are the islands China also claims the ones that sparked the protest I mentioned earlier. There's a nightmare scenario brewing in the East China Sea. The risks of an accidental confrontation between the two nations is rising, and it could draw in other countries like the United States. And the reason the Chinese Communist Party is so freaked out about a militarized Japan is that Japan's self-defense force can already rival China's military. Even though China has more soldiers and outspends Japan, Japan has the strongest navy and air force in Asia, according to one expert. And remember, that's with only a self-defense force. Japan's supremacy is thanks in part to cutting-edge technology plus a missile defense system installed by the U.S. Meanwhile, the Chinese military is still struggling to modernize. And even though right now Japan isn't allowed nuclear weapons, the country already has nuclear power plants. It's not a stretch to imagine how quickly Japan could arm itself with nuclear weapons. In recent weeks, some Japanese officials have even quietly suggested they should allow the U.S. to keep nuclear weapons in Japan. With Godzilla and a nuclear-armed Uncle Sam, they'd be unstoppable. This is all very convenient for Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He's using the North Korea nuclear situation and Japan's relationship with the U.S. to get Japan the military force he's always wanted. Together with Donald Trump, we have been successfully demonstrating our strong will to exercise pressure against North Korea. So I strongly look forward to making every effort with you and also with other members of the international community to achieve the denuclearization of North Korea. And that might be a reality the Chinese Communist Party will just have to get used to. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. So how much you want to bet that if Japan gets a military, it will have giant robots? But until that becomes the most interesting thing to watch on the internet, for now, head over to ChinaUncensored.tv, where you can see full half-hour episodes of China Uncensored for free. Once again, that's ChinaUncensored.tv.